Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Today, this is going to be a little weird. Um, so I, I recorded a full clip and uh, totally didn't check to make sure the audio levels was fine on it. Uh, turns out my mic level was completely off. So I am voicing over this currently. So I'm going to try and match it up a little bit to what I was talking about before. Um, but basically today what we're doing is we're going to be tackling a sort of tutorial on how to plan out a village and not just a normal village an abandoned village i thought this would be a fun project to do because we've got the coolest gate that we want to build in this area for us to be able to teleport around for our world tour and just in the, in the future in general um, and so i thought why not make it sort of tutorial based because we're going to be doing this pretty fast now as you can see, I'm riding a horse. I did find a horse. This is the second horse that I was riding because the other one died in a horrible accident. Um, and I don't know what to name this horse. What should we name this horse? Oh, I'm about to reveal my new skin. What? Bam. How do you like it? I think it looks good. I got rid of the scarf, added a mouth because I realized I didn't have a mouth. And... I really like it. I think it looks pretty nice. The glasses I also updated so that they match my current pair of glasses. Uh, this is much more accurate to what I actually am uh, looking like. Um, and I, I really like it. I think the mouth actually does help quite a bit as well. I think it's pretty good. So that's my new skin. And I have gotten uh, into some chainmail texturing as well. Got a full set of fully, men fully uh, enchanted, that's the word. Um, set of chainmail armor that we're going to be wearing in place of our, uh, you know, our, our normal diamond armor. This just makes the game a bit more exciting. Um, I don't really think it's really that hard. And so this, this has already proven to make things uh, more difficult. Um, and so just wanted to, to show you that because I've also worked on the chainmail texture and it looks pretty daggum sick. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here you're seeing the back, and it's kind of got some straps and stuff going on. I think it looks pretty good. I added some leather bits to it to make it feel a little bit more than just chainmail. Um, and the front has a little bit of a diamond accent, just because I thought that this was uh, a pretty unique type of armor. That is, uh, it's pretty good, um, and because it's ours and it's going to be looking pretty snazzy, I wanted to make it look good. Um, for us to be walking around in let me know what your thoughts are on on it and uh whenever i actually release things on the uh release the texture pack i'll definitely let you know um i also tried to make the armor actually like blue um i think it looks pretty good so let's get a, go ahead and get on our horse and right on over to the area we're going to be working in. I've already done quite a bit of uh, landscaping just to get an idea of what we're going to be working on. And uh, well, by landscaping, I mean laying things out. And as you can see, this area is going to be looking pretty crazy. And I'll let you know right now, it looks even more crazy because I am from the future and know what it looks like. Not because I failed to get the audio. No, not like that. I'm responsible. Um, but this area is going to be pretty cool. So this blue area right here, this is going to be the Cullis Gate. And the stone wall that wraps around is going to be kind of a retaining wall. Um, the, the concept that I'm going with is uh, similar to how older RPG games were sort of laid out. You had like these areas that you could explore, um, these open areas, but then you also had pathways that you had to walk around. Um, and so the pathway we've already done, the immersive path we worked on last episode, if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out because it is very cool. I'm really happy with it. Um, and this is just an addition onto that. This place is going to be one of the open areas that we get to explore around a bit. But this one is going to be in an abandoned village. And so it's going to be all run down and it's going to be pretty dangerous. We're going to try and put some skeletons around here and just try and make it uh, a little bit more uh, of an adventure, I suppose. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'll fair, or fair warn you. I'll forewarn you. The next clip also has no audio, but I realized this in the middle of the episode. So at the end, there is actual audio paired with uh, my voice. So sorry about the weird mix up, but let's get on in to the next steps. 
All right, so we're back here. Uh, decided to start out in front of our little abandoned camp here. Um, we're going to go exploring a bit into the cave that we uh, I've been working on a bit. I've been extending it just a little bit and added a new feature that is, I think, going to be pretty cool for this world. It's going to be a little, little wacky, but I think it's going to be pretty cool. So this is the cave that we're going to be exploring. Um, and... So the concept I was thinking of is what do old games have that Minecraft doesn't? And some of you are probably going to think this is stupid and weird. Um, but in my mind, I was thinking load screens. We don't have anything that really distinguishes something from another area. Like the dimensions is the only time a load screen, I think, is really in place in Minecraft. So I was thinking, how could we make it so that we have load screens in our worlds to make it feel almost like you're traveling a decent way? Um, and so down below, I've implemented a type of load screen. It's a concept that I, I kind of just came up with on the fly. And I think it's pretty cool. I really like it. So here you notice a black wall. And of course, we've got the Brew Labs notice is stuck in load screen. Please contact support. I support's not going to help you. But as you see, we're using our black wool to make this void. Our, it, it, our black wool is just a straight up black, solid black surface. Um, and it makes this really cool void. And so I'm using this to make a load screen. Um, and whenever I say load screen, I'm meaning just like a place that's just like, you're really not anywhere. It doesn't feel like you're anywhere. The only thing you can tell in here are the uh, pressure plates. And that just is to signify where you should walk. Um, and so when you step over these, you'll you'll be able to walk uh, just normal walk across and it'll open the piston door that's on the other side. And that's kind of the load screen experience. Now, I had an idea. What do you guys, I guess, would you be interested in if I made a pressure plate in the center that teleports you into a cave system that you kind of have to explore through in order to get through this load screen, if, if you will. Like there's a cave that actually goes through um, and is an extension, I'm putting air quotes up, an extension of the load screen that we've got, like the, or the cave that we have here. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that because I thought that could be fun um, and we could really have a blast with that. But if you don't think it's worth our time, then I'm totally down for not doing it. Just wanted to run that by you because I think it could be fun. And so now this is the entrance of the cave, the actual uh, entrance, I, I kind of made it. Um, and this is where you'll pop out to get to this abandoned village. And I've been doing a lot of landscaping and I think it's gonna look pretty daggum good. So this is the cave entrance. Also, obviously I made a little side mountain thing, a little cliff area, connected it up built this cliff area out a bit and cleared a lot of this land. But as you can see in the distance, there is quite the wall going around. And this is kind of becoming a sort of um, a hidden veil, if you will. Um, V-A-L-E, not V-E-I-L. Um, and so this area right here is going to be the entrance that is also overgrown and blocked off. You're not going to be able to actually enter there. There's no, no way to enter that way. That's going to be like before it was abandoned. That is where like carts and people actually came through. Now the only access is through this cave system. And so I thought that could be a fun thing to implement. It'll show that it was a well thought of town, but it's actually abandoned. And so I'm going to go into a spectator right now just to be able to give you a rundown of what's going on. Um, so we've got this flat area here, and I'm thinking the road's going to go along this way here, and it's going to lead right up to the Cullis Gate. And I'm thinking the Cullis Gate is going to be the center of town, kind of the, the central point of town. And all in this area is going to be abandoned houses and abandoned uh, shops and what have you. Um, and I'm still coming up with the concept of what I want the sort of the product of this village to be, um, or to have been, I suppose. Um, over here, you can see I've been landscaping a bit, connecting it up to the hills and stuff. Eventually, I'm going to cover this river over and try and make it so it's naturally natural feeling, um, that it kind of comes up to a hill and then drops off. I'm going to probably make it so this river doesn't connect or anything. Honestly, that river is going to be gone, most likely. 
Um, so this is this is what I've got so far. I'm thinking it looks pretty good. I really do like it. Um, but I think now what we need to get into is we need to get into the actual planning of things. And so what I'm going to be using is concrete for this. And the reason I like concrete is because it's so plain and bright and vibrant. It sticks out like a sore thumb in this world. Um, and it's really good for just being able to lay things out to be able to see exactly what you're thinking and you can color code it too, which is really nice. Um, so we're going to be using concrete and I'm going to lay some stuff out and then we're going to come back and I'm going to talk about it and then we'll see from there what's going on. All right, guys, I am back. I'm actually recording with, you know, me actually talking while playing the game. I'm not being some weird voiceover creepy person. Um, we're back and I'm pretty high up here, as you can see, pretty high up. And I want to take a look at what I've been doing. I really think it's going to be cool and I really think y'all are going to like it. So without further ado, we'll buy him. Oh, you can't see anything. Here you go. Been planning quite a bit. As you can see, lots of stuff is down here. And I'm going to walk through exactly what everything is real quickly and briefly and kind of discuss what thought goes into this and how I go about planning a village. So I would say the first and foremost and most important thing um, to start out like planning a village like this out is that you need to plan out the roads. And so the red dotted line is everything that is road in our area, even small little side paths that don't actually connect to like or don't aren't actually a part of the main road. The red little dotted line is all of our road connections all the way throughout. So you see, this is where the cave is, and it comes out, comes out the cave and comes up here, and it forks right here. You can either go straight into the town or you can go right, which is where the main road actually used to be. So the main gate would be here. They would enter up above and have to make their way down into this area. And so this is going to be a house, and this is going to be a house. Um, and so the main road goes this way. There'll be an arch right here. This is probably going to be super overgrown and just really lost in the swamp. Um, this house is. And then there's the road just continues on through. And basically, the road is going to be leading right to the coal escape. Because one, for us, that is the most important thing. But two, it kind of makes for a natural square. I think this makes for a nice natural square area. We can kind of decorate it with whatever people would have on the square I don't know um, and so it'll lead right there um, and I think that's gonna be nice and uh, obviously you can see the road goes all the way around goes wraps around there and goes up to this area right here and to this building and right up to here and so it leads everywhere and you can get a good glimpse of that let me go ahead and sleep really quick so that we don't have to deal with this nighttime so that is the roadway. The red is the roadway. Now, the blue you can probably put together is where the buildings are going to go. And so nothing is distinguishing them to being um, like bars or houses or whatever. Um, that is purely in my own noodle. Uh, and so um, the blue, most of these are going to be houses of, of the blue buildings. Some of these are going to be some other types of buildings. Um, so this will be a house house. House, 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 house. Actually, that's going to be kind of a farmhouse because the yellow distinguishes where a crop field is going to be slash was once was. Because remember, this is abandoned. Um, and so some of you may be thinking, why are you going into such a, a long thought process on how to make an abandoned village? And my argument would be you need to make an abandoned village the way you need to think of how the village was laid out before it was abandoned, how it was laid out when it was a functioning village, because you can easily make anything abandoned, just overgrow it and no people. I mean, Minecraft already does that because we don't have anybody but stupid villagers. But that is my, my argument there. If you don't put thought process into it and you kind of just throw houses around, it doesn't feel quite like the village it could be it could be fine it could feel a band, like an abandoned small village but i wanted this to feel like it used to be quite a nice little town and is now for some reason totally just abandoned 
So that's my my argument for that. Why we're going through all of this um, planning because it's pretty important, I think. And so, anyways, houses here. This is going to be a house, but there, these purple lines are going to be stalls. Now, the purple concrete are is a variety of different things for this this is going to be some different stalls to buy from because the road leads this way and so this is good buying area a good area for people to have set stuff up um, this is going to be like a little dock that's all been run down and abandoned probably just going to be straight up underwater that's going to be a well um, that'll be just a, a little diagonal house and now this is going to be one of the main houses that we're going to make it's not a house i suppose it's a bar we're going to make this a, a tavern of sorts, but we're going to make it still functioning, if, if you will. Um, this area, basically, my thought process on this abandoned concept is it's abandoned by the residents. Some low-life people can are still sort of here. And so this bar is still going to be functioning. We want it to be like an actual bar. It's just going to be very, very run down, very, really pretty awful, um, but still people actually there. And so the pink area is going to be like an outdoor seating area that used to be really nice. Now it's not um, in this back area. Same thing, but like an outdoor sort of uh, patio type place. This is going to be another crop field of some sort. Not really sure what. Um, this is going to be the town hall, and this is going to be quite dilapidated. This is going to be quite a, a rundown building. Um, I want it to almost be like falling in on itself. Um, and so this is going to be the town hall by far the biggest building here. Um, this little white area, the white areas are distinguishing for the sort of the, the uh, temple area. So that's going to be the temple over there. And there, there is a road that leads all the way around and it takes a while to get to the temple. Um, this is going to be the graveyard section of the town. Every town, I feel like probably needs a graveyard of some sort. Um, I, I, we, I haven't done that in all of our towns or any of our towns, except for actually the town of Moore has one, but this is going to be this town's and it's going to be fun because we have our coffin texture for the trap chest. I think it's going to be a really fun time. Um, but the temple is going to be right here and it's going to be quite a different style of temple than uh, what we have for the one in Sarthal. Um, this temple is going to be to Os as well, the god of Os, which is the main god of this world. Um, but it's going to be kind of white. God, these guys, as you can see down there, there are three banners. These guys just spawn all the time. We're about to get four banners. It's annoying. Um, so that's going to be a temple that's all run down and stuff. It's going to be a little waterfall that goes into that little deep area right there. Um, this is going to be a windmill that is probably going to just be like totally destroyed maybe the blades are actually in the water and scattered about i think that could be fun now the orange bean looking or bladder or spleen looking thing this so this is where the if the place actually gets its name the place this place is going to be called orchard vale and the reason for this is this is going to be an old apple orchard that's just like totally overgrown he a bunch of thickets um, dead trees, all sorts of all sorts of fun stuff to, that you get to do when you're doing like a abandoned swampy village. But this is going to be like an apple orchard or an old apple orchard right here in this or orange area. And then right there where that little road forks, I want to make a little island that is sticking up where a big old oak tree stands. And I want the oak tree to be dead very dead. It's going to be a custom custom one. Um, and so it's going to be a dead oak tree and that'll help blo both block your vision from really seeing out that way. But it also ties in a bit and makes it so that's like a sacred oak almost. And that's where this place gets its name. It's a sacred apple oak tree of sorts, but it's all dead because everyone left it. And I think the last color to cover is green. So green is just going to be where gardens and things used to be. Green sorts of things. So this is like a garden for this house, garden for that house, side gardens for these. That's going to a little bigger, so maybe a tree will go there. Um, and a tree is going to go right there because I think that's a good, the, there's a fork in the path right here that just kind of splits all over the place. So I think a tree right there is going to be good. And this center area is go just going to be a lake. Um, we may have a house that may have been right here 
like maybe the lake used to be right here and it actually expanded and sunk a house in. I think that could be fun. Um, and so that is the plan. That's what we're going to be doing. And so I just wanted to say the the importance of planning this out, you don't necessarily have to plan out everything like this. But for me, this helps me understand exactly what I'm getting into when I'm making a village and exactly what this village is going to be, how it would function. Now, because it's abandoned, some of this stuff isn't going to be even fully built. Like the crop farms are going to be pretty sporadic and pretty just dead and overgrown. But it's the thought of what it would be like before it was abandoned. I think that is the, the key thing that I would say you should take away. If you're making an abandoned build, plan it out as if it wasn't abandoned and then add your abandoned element elements to it. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and get into one last thing, and that is the build style. I want to build a house real quickly with you just to show you what this house is going to, these, these houses in this build style is going to look like. And then I think we're going to have to call it for this episode. So let me go ahead and get down there, get materials gathered up and take care of these ding dongs. And I'll be back with you. All right. I have all of the materials that we need. And I figured let's start with this house. This house is going to be the most complete and not dilapidated. Uh, of the houses because this is up here on the hill so it's not as affected by like the overtaking of the swamp area um, all of these houses eventually I'm going to like dip the landscape down and mess with the the terrain a bit to make it look a bit more uh, swampy but this one is up here on this hill it's pretty safe and I think it's going to be one of those houses that maybe a low life is using um, but I think it's going to be probably the most like still good to use um, so I'm going to swap these out just real quick um, one of the main things that I wanted to discuss when we're building this up is block palette I wanted to talk about block palette so when you're building something and well when you're building a, a village you need to think through I would say the first one of the first things you should do after you've kind of laid this sort of town out this idea um, you can do it before or after, I suppose, but I usually think of sort of the layout in the area that I'm going to be wanting something and then go into the build style. Um, but for this build, I actually made the build style first and then did the layout. So you can do it either way. Um, it's not no problem either way. Uh, this way, honestly, doing the build style first is probably a little bit better in terms of being able to know exactly how big houses are going to be like these I could measure out exactly how big I wanted the house to be if you're going about it the opposite way and you're planning it out first and then you're making the build style you just have to be able to be a little adjustable make your plans and stuff a little bit more fluid um, but it should be pretty okay now, the build palette for this is quite interesting. Um, it's kind of blocks that don't get used a ton, um, blocks that people don't like all the time. And it's mainly going to be the roof that is the interesting thing. Now, it, because it's, it's, I guess, I shouldn't say it's blocks that people don't like. Um, it's blocks that people wouldn't use normally as a roof in particular. Um, but let me go ahead and get the framework of this done in the bottom wall layer. Um, for the wall, we are going to be using granite, uh, polished granite and, uh, stone brick, not stone brick, sorry, uh, regular brick. Um, so let me go ahead and get this built and then I'll come back and show you kind of what the bottom is going to look like and we'll get into the roof section. All right, so this is the bottom layer, what it's going to look like. This is the mixture, uh, as I said, granite, polished granite, and a regular brick. Um, and there'll be window there and a window there. Um, and so the this is the bottom area. It's not very tall, uh, but I think overall it looks very good uh, once the roof is in place. So now doing the roof, we are going to take these spruce logs and we're going to actually strip them like so. And we need some crafting bench. Let me get that. All right, so the next thing that you want to do when building in this style that we're, uh, I guess, I've established, but you're learning for the first time, is we're going to make this sort of section here on this side and here. And then in between, 
put a stripped spruce block. And that is just adding a bit of flair to the side, makes it a little more interesting. And I think it, it looks pretty good. Now this I'm gonna leave for just a sec because I want to do kind of the roof first and then get into it because this section is actually gonna bow up, I think. Um, now we're gonna get into the actual sort of layout of the roof now. And to start it off, what is gonna happen is we're going to put a stair right here like that and then spruce wood right here scratch the spruce wood spruce log we're actually putting spruce planks right here and then on top of that is going to be the spruce wood now i don't have any good so now we're going to go up another stair on the inside of the stair put an upside down stair facing into the building and then continue on up another two blocks of stripped spruce wood and then again a stair and a stair and now we're going to go up by one strip it spruce you guys can probably guess what we're going to do next go up by one strip it and put some stair and then this is actually the center portion of it so we don't actually have to we could put a stair there i suppose um, but eventually this is going to, I think, stick out by one and we're going to have a stripped one right there. And I think that's going to be pretty good. These guys just don't learn, man. We're going to have such a collection of these. All right. Now that I've emulated that on all four sides, it's time to get into the roof itself. And this is where the slightly controversial block is going to come into play. I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal, um, but we're going to use coarse dirt as one of our main roof blocks. Now, the reason for this is the build I'm building this basing this off of is from Fable 2, I believe. I think it's in Fable 1 as well, but it's in Fable 2, I know. Um, and it's kind of a, a brown thatch, and we don't have that in this game. So this is the best that I can kind of think of. And so we're going to build this up, and it's going to be beautiful, I'm telling you. Good thing is, in our texture pack, we have this uh, coarse dirt that is actually darker um, than normal coarse dirt. It's still going to look good in vanilla, but it's not as good, I guess. I just like our coarse dirt more. Um, actually, I should have, I should have done this smarter so I can get up there. There we go. And so it's going to be coarse dirt and a spruce wood mixture. And it's, it looks really nice. Um, having the stone flex in it, I think actually helps, makes it feel a bit more realistic. Just a quick fix to the build. I realized I, I did this when I was making this, um, so instead of on this very top layer, instead of putting this the upside down stair on the stair like these ones are, um, put this one goes on the spruce wood, um, spruce log, so that this top portion actually goes stair stair instead of block stair block stair. If that makes sense, hopefully that makes sense. Um, just make it, it makes it so it's a little bit uh, nicer. But I need to pick that stuff up. Um, and then we'll take a look at the what the roof is looking like because we got to detail it out a bit now. All right, so this is what it looks like currently. Um, and it is, it's pretty boring, pretty dull and drab. But what we're gonna do to make a little bit of interest is we're going to add some sort of pillars that go up it along the sides. Um, so in line with the pillars right here that are on the outside, we're gonna emulate this right here. So instead of dirt here, I guess we could do dirt here, but it's gonna be a stripped log like that. And it's gonna go all the way up. I think this can be, uh, this one probably, we should probably put a stair and do this all the way up because there's gonna be a stair right there. But this is, going to go all the way up and then instead of the top layer being up here it's actually going to be right here and these bands that are going to come up will actually connect with this top beam and this actually upside down stair doesn't need to be here and i i don't think we're going to have a stick out we could potentially have a stick out 
uh, little bit right here, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, so let me go ahead and put that right here and then uh, I'll detail out the roof a bit and then that'll be the general build style that we're going to go with. I think we have a chimney to build that I think you may like, but I'm going to go ahead and build that all off camera and come back with the final results and we'll wrap this episode up. All right, so here we have it, the finished house. Inside is not done, obviously, and uh, well, we'll try and finish the inside. We're not good at that. We'll try and get better at that. So the house is now done, added a few details uh, that I'll show you here, added a chimney here. This is a fun chimney design. Um, it sticks out two blocks from the wall and then just goes kind of straight up on this back portion. And you just add a little bit of depth here and there to make it a little interesting. Uh, let's actually go into spectator mode so I can actually show you really easily. So that's the chimney design, just goes up a few blocks at a time, add some stairs and make it kind of lean into the, into the wall itself. And then it goes all the way up. And then it's got this sort of like stack on the top um, where there is a campfire in there um, and then it can actually just smoke a little bit didn't put a hay block because it doesn't need to be tall uh, a tall smoke but nonetheless smoke and added some fence gates dark oak fence gates down here just add a little detail those sides are not going to be de detailed they're just going to be plain no windows or anything um, and then the back side here is the exact same uh, as the front so very simple, very easy to build, and uh, but fun. I think it looks cool, and having a bunch of these around all dilapidated are going to look pretty cool, I think. So that is going to do it for this episode. Um, next episode, we're going to go into a bit more about some of the planning phase of things and how to go about thinking about that. If you guys have any ideas or any things that you would like me to go into for planning things out just let me know and i'd be happy to go into it for you so that is going to do it for this episode guys i hope you liked the episode hope you like everything wow i messed with the shaders a bit to make them a bit darker and it made my enchantment stuff look super glowy um but anyways hope you guys liked it let me know what your thoughts are down below anything you want me to add to this little build series and uh, i'll see you guys in the next episode